Hello guys, welcome to our class for today. For this particular class, we are going to be looking at curved mirror, curved mirrors or spherical mirrors. Okay, so we look at the different types of curved mirrors. Then we also look at the different images that are formed by curved mirrors. So please, for this class, I will encourage you, you can get a plain paper, get your uh, mass set, and then so that you can be then you have a ruler so that you can be able to start to learn how to draw read diagrams read diagrams that will enable you to be able to locate the images formed by curved mirrors okay so please get those materials ready so that we can go straight to our class but before then if you have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to this channel Click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. This is Normal Science Tutors Online, and we are bringing physics directly to your very doorstep. I remain on top of my care. Please, you can reach us through the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. Is that okay? So, please, if you are ready for us, we are also ready for you. So we are going to our class for today, and we are going to be treating curved or spherical mirrors curved or spherical mirror so let's go straight to our class you are welcome curved or spherical mirror so these there are two types of curved or spherical mirrors we have the concave mirror and the converse mirrors okay we have the concave mirror and then the converse mirror for the concave mirror their reflecting surface is bent inward while the silver surface is outward so for this concave mirror all incident rays they converge after reflection at a point okay so like this is the ray diagram any ray that is incident or the reflected surface, they will converge at a point. So this is for concave mirrors. This is for concave mirrors. For convex mirrors, the reflecting surface is bent outward while the silver side is bent into inwards. Incident rays from the reflecting surface, they will all diverge after reflection. Incident rays, look at them. When they incident on the reflecting surface, they diverge. Okay, they diverge from this side, they diverge. So this is the reflecting surface and this is the silver surface. So these are the shapes of the two curved mirrors that we have, concave and converse mirrors right so for a plane mirror there are different parts of a plane mirror and that is what we are going to discuss shortly okay so these are terms that are associated with a plane mirror now this is a curved mirror so typically this is a concave mirror but this can this whatever is is uh, applicable to this mirror is also applicable to the converse mirror so in this mirror when you look at it you see that there's a straight line that is like dividing the mirror into two then there are two points here and then there's a distance between c and this and all, all these points they have their different meaning and they play very important role when you want to draw your read diagrams for curved mirror so the aperture of a mirror is just the width of the mirror so like for this particular mirror the aperture is a b the distance a b is the core the aperture then this point here the point here which is the center of the reflecting surface of the mirror is called the pole p then the center or curvature of the mirror is the center of the sphere. Or if you look at the mirror, the mirror is like is a, a sphere that is caught. Okay, so it is the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part. So 
this center of curvature is the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part. Okay, then the radius of curvature. It is the distance between the pole and the center of curvature. That distance from here to here is called the radius of curvature. Then we also have what is called the principal focus. This principal focus is the point on the principal axis. This line is called the principal axis. This line is the principal axis. So the principal focus is the point on the principal axis to which all rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis they converge or appear to diverge after reflection. All these are big grammar. When we start to draw the ray diagram, we see exactly what we're talking about. Converge and diverge, we see them. Okay. Then the focal length is distance between the pole and the principal focus. The distance between the pole and the principal focus equals the focal length. Now the relationship between the, focal, between the focal length and the radius of curvature is that the focal length is equal to twice the the radius of curvature. I mean, it's equal to twice the focal length, and that is the, the focal length is equal to half of the radius of curvature. So, radius of curvature is equal to two f, okay, or f is equal to half of the radius of curvature. Please, this this simple equation is very, very important because some questions that you'll be giving, you will not be giving the radius of, um, you will not be giving the focal, the focal points or the focal length. It will not be given to you. So if it is not given to you, you are giving the radius of curvature. You just use this formula to get your focal length by dividing the radius of curvature by two. Okay, so please just take note of this very, very important and key for your understanding. It's very important and key for your understanding. So we're going to look at ray diagram. This is where the ray drawing actually starts for uh, light energy. This is where it actually starts. So please, I will really beg you because it is good that as a physics student, that has studied light energy, if you should be able to locate images of objects on a curved mirror and on a lens. Is that okay? So if you can be able to master these drawings that I will show you now, it is to your advantage. It's to your advantage. You should be able to know where the image of an object will be formed when the object is at a particular point. If you don't know where the image of an object will be found when an object is at a particular point on the principal axis of a curved mirror, then there's a problem. So please pay attention and practice to draw them. Thank you. Let's go. So these are the tips that you will know when you want to locate the image formed by an object on a curved mirror. Okay. So the image formed by objects on a curved mirror, they have different characteristics depending on the position of the object from the mirror. That is exactly what I have said. So depending on the object or the or position of the objects from the mirror, the image will be having different different characteristics. Now for you to locate an image on a plane mirror or the image formed by a plane mirror using ray diagram, please just master this simple rules that one, all rays that are parallel to and close to the principal axis will converge towards the principal focus. Well, okay, then two, all ray passing through the center of curvature, they will reflect back along the incident ray, which I, I will show you all this. I will show you when I'm going to apply all these rules that are here. All rays to the principal focus are reflected parallel to the principal axis. I will show you depending on where the object is. Broken lines are used to indicate visual rays or visual rays. And then while unbroken lines are used to indicate real rays and images. 
the images are formed by actual intersection of rays after reflection, why visual images are formed by apparent intersection of rays produced backwards. All this we are going to see as we look at the various ray diagrams for different position of objects and then the images that are formed. So please, let's go and see. Okay, so if you look at this, right, image formed by a concave mirror has different characteristics depending on the position of the object from the mirror. This is what we have said before now. Case one, this is case one. Now in case one, when object is between the focal point and the pole, we said this is the focal point, this is the center or curvature, and then this is your pole. So this is your focal point. Now when the object is between the focal point and the pole, right, this is a ray diagram. A ray that is close to and parallel to the principal axis. After, after reflection from this reflective surface, it will pass through the principal focus. Okay, it will pass through the principal focus. So then rays through the center of curvature, they will be reflected along the incident line, they will be reflected back and front to, for you to be able to locate this image. So when the object is between the focal points and the pole, these are the characteristics of the image form. Look at this image that is formed. One, this image cannot be formed on, on the screen because it is not formed by actual intersection of ray. It is formed by apparent intersection of rays. So this image is virtual. It is erect. It is larger than objects. And it is behind the mirror. Have you seen it? So the image is behind the mirror. It is visual. It is erect. And it is larger than object. These are the characteristics of the image form when the object is between the focal point and the pole. Have you seen it? So please, you have to learn how to draw this drawing. Then case number two, when the objects are the focal point, when the objects are the focal point, look at the ray diagram. The image form will be at infinity. So simply put, the image cannot be located. Look at the rays, we call, because the rays are parallel. The image cannot be located. The image will be at infinity. Okay, that is case number two. Case number three. Object is between the focal point and the center of curvature. So look at it. The object is between C and F. When the object is between C and F, the rays that are parallel to and close to the principal as is, as I said before, after hitting the reflective surface, they will be reflected through the principal focus through the center of curvature to give you this image. So if you look at this image, when the object is between C and F, this is the object. When the object is between C and F, the image form is what is at C, is beyond C. Yeah, the image is beyond C. The image is real. It is inverted upside down and it is larger than an object. So these are the characteristics of the image form when the object is between C and F. Then case number four, when the object is at C, when the object is at C, this is the ray diagram for it. The image that is formed is at C. It is inverted. It is the same size as the object and it is real. So please guys, you need to study how to draw these ray diagrams. That's okay. Study how to draw them. They are for your own benefit. And that is why I brought them up for you to see. Okay. So case number five. When the object is behind C, when the object is beyond C, the image that is formed is between C and F. It is smaller than the object. Look at the image here. It is inverted and it is real. So you need to learn how to draw these three diagrams so that you can get exactly what you have to get. Then when the object is at infinity, maybe you want to study the image of the moon. You know, the moon, you can say it is at infinity. When the object is at infinity, 
the image form is at F. It is inverted. It is three. It is smaller than the object. So guys, these are the various um, stages of the image form by a concave mirror. Okay, so this requires your practice. Practice how to draw them and then understand the characters of the image form. These are questions in Charm and Wayek. So please, you need to practice and then know these ones very well. For a convex mirror, generally, this is the characters of image form by a convex mirror. Or any position you put the object, these are the characters. So generally, for convex mirror, image form is visual. It is smaller than the object, it's erect, and always formed between the pole and the focal point. Okay, so this is just generally the image formed by convex mirror. Convex mirror is not like concave mirror. Okay, so what are the uses of these curved mirrors? One, for convex mirrors, it is convex mirror that are used as car driving mirror. Why? Because they have a wide field of view. You can use them to see an object that is far away and it will bring the object close to you. That is why if you look at the mirror of your car, the right object is closer than it seems to be. Object is closer than it seems to be. That is what they write in your car driving mirror. Okay, so that is the uses of a convex mirror. Then for concave mirror for concave mirror a concave mirror is used as a dentist mirror it's also used for as TV mirror it's used for star gazing in telescope and they are used for focusing of radiant heat energy yes you can actually use you can use concave give mirror to focus radiant energy okay you can use to direct the energy of the sun and focus in the piece of paper the piece of paper will start to burn that's one of the use of concave mirrors so these are the uses of uh, curve mirrors um, well, thank you so much for your time i hope you have gained a lot from this do your practice and then you will understand better okay so this way we are stopping for today please um if you want to subscribe to our channel please subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video youtube will notify you this is no my science to tutorials online thank you for your time reach us via the whatsapp number that is showing on your screen that okay we are here to help you out with any challenge or problem that you have in physics. Thanks and hope to see you in our next class.